And then um, the last main item then is hate crime. Yeah, so you've, you've had this report before, Commissioner, at, at various courts, but I think it's absolutely key, and certainly having been to the Community Cohesion event uh, last week with yourself, it was great to hear first-hand about, about hate crime and around how it really affects individuals in our communities um, who, who have been victims or witnesses or have heard about um, hate crimes and hate incidents. So I think it's absolutely key, and it was great to hear sort of from the heart some of the people that spoke at that. Um, um, last week. Just to, to be really clear um, around a, a hate crime, this is something that's motivated or driven or even just perceived to be, but that's still really important uh, because of someone's race, religion, disability, sexual orientation or, or gender identity. So it's a very wide ranging um, sort of five strand, I suppose, uh, crime type. And an incident is something which would fall short of actually being a, a crime. And, and we've worked really hard, and I know yourself have, around our Hate Hurts campaign, and we've had this now for two, we're into our third year of it. And each, each month, to try and get the interest there, we have a different theme, a different strand, and try different ways to engage our communities um, across West Yorkshire around what a crime is, um, what an incident is, make sure our recording is very accurate, but then actually to ask ourselves, well, why has this happened and what can we do to make people feel safe and prevent it happening uh, in the future? The, the report does talk about um, a, a, a sharp increase after the, the Brexit vote 23rd of June there, 16, um, and then um, you know it's settling now back down. Other forces actually got in touch with us after June, July last year and wanted to talk about their really sharp increases and ours now levelling back out. But that is because we've been quite high for a number of years, but a lot of that is driven by our own raising awareness, media campaigns, etc. Um, so we have had um, a, a levelling out um, in relation to our, our hate crime. Um, but our biggest category, and it's the same elsewhere up and down the country, our biggest category, around 80% of hate crime, um, um, relates to where the victim is caused to feel under threat, distressed or alarmed, uh, but without actually any violence. So I think it's important to point that out and to reassure our communities that there's no injury, um, it's a perception that they are going to be injured or they're anxious or nervous around this. Um, so it's 80 percent so it is quite high but as I say that's the same picture nationally um, as well and our our crime does follow what's happening nationally as well around race hate crime so paragraph 8 race hate crime again being 80 percent of hate crimes recorded so again it's a big category it's a volume category uh, and a very important category uh, and there's much smaller volumes in the other in the other categories of the faith crime the disability hate, sexual orientation, and then um, gender identity. They are much smaller categories, but but you know no less important. Um, just just moving forward then about some ongoing work that we've done. As I've said, we've already mentioned around our, our hate crime uh, reporting and our action against hate that we are we are working with. And the Home Office uh, recently after Brexit brought out a um, an action plan. Uh, a national action plan around around hate crime, which is then on paragraph 27. And I'm really pleased to say when we looked at the Home Office um, Action Against Hate Plan, we were absolutely doing all of that already. So I was very pleased with that, that we're already upstream and, 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 and working on that and have been, as I say, and developing it over time for the last 18 months, two years. Um, ongoing work that's more recent work over the last six months or so are around British Transport Police, and we've been working hard with British Transport Police with Karen Straps and Bev Adams around um, how, how they would deal with hate crime. Um, and whilst they record it and have it on their own systems, it's still happening in West Yorkshire, which is incredibly important to us. And we've now got some projects being rolled out around community safety advocates. So, uh, for example, at Leeds University, the University of Leeds, they are looking at community safety advocates around people coming forward. And we've had that position before at Bradford University as well, where they've worked hard around having some of the students uh, take control of this, this issue to be able to help other, other students. 
Um, the report outlines that we um, have had a peer review with Humberside Police and that some of my team went over to Humberside to look at their response to hate crime and they came to us as well so we could look at sharing best practice uh, and I'm really pleased to say that they only um, had two recommendations for us whereas we had quite a lot that we shared with Humberside that we thought they could be doing um, and one of them was around scrutiny panels and about the sergeants being involved with those uh, that the raised actually were probably not quite where we wanted to be so we are looking at that and again around the satisfaction levels as well um, so, so that was the sort of feedback from Humberside so we wanted to get upstream and look at this before HMIC came and obviously reviewed us which was I think the right thing to do so we could, we could get ahead of the game a little bit um, and then just moving forward, we've obviously got the uh, information sharing agreement that was led by PSNI and the National Police Chiefs Council with Telmama and I've had a number of meetings with them uh, and I've got another event uh, a week on Sunday that I'm representing the Chief at um, at, at Kirklees around, around that organisation, um, around supporting um, support networks out in the community. So we are doing lots in relation to hate crime. There's lots of activity happening both from the central point, from Karen Straps and myself, but also locally through, through the five uh, areas and the neighbourhood policing teams that are out on the ground. And it does link directly back to, to ASB, to hate crime, and the real drive around community cohesion. And you won't be surprised to hear that it features quite heavily in the neighbourhood policing review um, that Marianne has, is leading on for me. Thank you, yeah, there's, there's again a lot of uh, detail within this uh, report and uh, I absolutely do recognise the, uh, the, the campaign, the, the haters campaign that has been in place now for about two years and uh, of course I've got involved with that which I'm very pleased to do so. So I think, um, as you know, we adopted um, some of the uh, reporting strands ahead of the legislation actually changing, so uh, that 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 has been uh, welcome. Um, but of course, again, as you've said, um, the fact that uh, world events, Brexit, mm. um, the event last week that we were at, the community cohesion event, uh, all these things are very real to uh, certain or a lot of sections of our community and uh, in terms of recognising and addressing that it is something we, we you know we absolutely need to uh, to be aware of and that's why it is a priority within the police police and crime plan around the, the hate crime and, and co community cohesion um, so in terms of the victims of, of hate crime particularly the repeat hate crime. Yes. Uh, can you just say a little bit around how we're supporting some of those vulnerable people and victims? Well, well as you know in the five districts we've worked really hard to keep our hate crime coordinators at the five, at the five uh, districts when other forces have maybe uh, seen that as a potential saving for example a number of years ago. We've re worked really hard to, to continue to have hate crime uh, coordinators and, and, um, and obviously that will continue into the future. We've also changed last year as well around who deals um, with, with hate crimes um, locally. So it's a change, it's a process change. And other forces have done the same, to be fair, where we, we actually allocate them now to our ward officers because those are the people that are there day in, day out with the support of the PCSOs as opposed to it being an officer on, on patrol who would be 24-7, you know, six shifts on, four shifts off, actually maybe working in different localities from one shift to the next. So we now allocate them out to the ward officers um, with the support of the PCSOs, because so, they're a constant in that community, um, to try and give that support. And we're also realising that we can't do everything ourselves, so we're using partnerships, we're using victim support to be able to give that wraparound yeah. uh, for that repeat victim, yeah. because we can't no. do, do everything no. ourselves, and I think we've got to realise yeah. that. I, I think there's a key here, Commissioner, and, and, and you mentioned it about... Um, trying to focus on how the individual is feeling about this very very personal attack on them as an individual and therefore our response absolutely has to be swift 
and we have to be incredibly understanding of the impact that then has on, on that person. So this is a real example of when somebody can suddenly be made to feel incredibly vulnerable. And so our response is really important and that's why we've really got to encourage members of the community to have the confidence to come in and report matters. We will take them seriously, we will take action where we can, when we can identify offenders and we will ensure that the victim is well supported because these are the very people in the communities that we need to support and also to have the confidence to come and work with us and alongside us in the future. Yeah. So I would, you know, repeat the fact that West Yorkshire Police do take hate crime incredibly seriously, have the confidence to come and report things to us. And if you are not satisfied with what we have done, then absolutely make a complaint and we will deal with it. Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks Thanks for that. And, uh, you know, I, I agree that, that, that we are working very hard to, uh, to, to take these things uh, very seriously. Um, and I guess it, part of the conundrum then is, is how we keep people informed once yes. reports have been made. So what, what we don't want to do is we're encouraging people to report mm. and, and that we are taking it seriously and it's zero tolerance but then yes. if they do that we need to follow it through, albeit, and I think most victims probably, um, you know, are not particularly anticipating some kind of criminal justice outcome, but, but certainly something that addresses yes. the behaviour of, a, of, a, of an individual. But I think that's where the ward officers and that constant of the PCSOs would come in, if they just call in, if they knock on the door, go call in and have a cup of tea, actually that's that, that constant that actually you know, we're aware of your vulnerabilities and that you've been a victim, or even if it's only an incident as opposed to a crime, it's still really important to us. Uh, and obviously we've got the hate crime um, coordinators as well, so it is important to keep people up to date um, and to ensure that they're satisfied and we have a, a conversation with them you know, when, when it's reported to us. But just going, going back a stage, we took a little bit of feedback last year around um, hate incidents and hate incidents not always being reported to them and some other public saying well you won't be able to do anything anyway it, it, whilst it made me feel vulnerable and upset it, it, it might be in the scale of things something or nothing and we were really keen to take that feedback on the chin and we, I worked with my force IAG and I remember you know we put out a video on YouTube where we've got lots and lots of members of my IAG out in the community so members of the public would recognise the area they stood in around saying come forward, this is what we can do, this is what we can't do. Yeah. So we're just reaching out and taking feedback and being really reflective so we don't always get it right um, to, to our communities to sort of reach out which came out I think last week in the event, in the community cohesion event. And similarly I'm really determined that in the same way that we're going to take this very seriously when it happens to a member of the public if one of my officers or staff is the victim of a hate crime, we will equally deal with it incredibly seriously. And sadly, that has happened recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and, and, and again, just to, to reassure you that um, through the Safe Communities funding, uh, there, are, there are, well, we had a, a dedicated grant round where 12 projects were funded uh, to the tune of more than 100,000. and. One of the outcomes of that was the development of the Stop Eight UK app, yes. which was a good outcome uh, and makes it a lot easier for, for things to be reported through that medium. And uh, 26 other organisations that have had general funding through through the uh, the the, uh, the grants as well. But uh, we're just looking at developing our. Um, uh, victims uh, uh, strategy over the next few years and, and we are very keen to build on the work around hate crime within there and how we support victims as you say through other organisations like either Stop Hate UK or Victim Support who can provide more sort of dedicated and, and specialist support where it's required. Thank you very much for that uh, for that report and, and update.